with the brewski and one more time, brewski! Oh man, past the 10, it's a touchdown, Oklahoma City! Three receivers, Walker going to the end zone, it is caught for a touchdown! Lane's going to get another carry, and Dwayne Lane's going to touchdown, Tallahassee Pride! As Funk drops the throw, he's going to air it out, right side, and wide open is A.J. Blaylock! Touchdown, Wolfpack! Juan Bosco is making some plays for this team! Juan Bosco, touchdown! Hello everyone and welcome to episode 2 of the SFL Update. I'm your commissioner and play-by-play -play commentator Cameron Irvine. If you uh, were fortunate enough to just see our new intro, there will be uh, a few more versions like that. That is also our brand new theme music, which you will hear throughout the night. Our theme music was a few years old, so we've decided to upgrade and we hope that, uh, that you thought it was awesome. Jason1347, thumbs up. Landry had awesome intro. Big Willie 54 yo, this is amazing. That's good stuff. Servo222 being the jokester. Happy to have everyone along uh, with us tonight. So far in the chat, Servo222, Big Willie 54 Darth Jester MD, I'm and Problem, Jason1347, Landry Hat, Luthorn16, MyMazC, NY Knights, TJ Kag, SFL, True Shot Caller1, Xanthos, and X-Factor56. Happy to have you uh, along for the ride tonight. Tonight is a very exciting night as we are announcing new teams, divisions, and conferences. Plus, we'll show you uh, the map and uh, how everything was decided. We'll show you the schedule formatting this year of the league so you can see exactly who you're going to be matching up with uh, throughout the course of the season. And we'll also give you a sneak peek on what's going on behind the scenes uh, on the SFL website currently under construction. Uh, our second phase uh, will should be released uh, within the week. We were hoping to have it all done and ready to go uh, by this evening, but it's still uh, got some work to do, but we've made some terrific progress. Um, on that as well. Dark Destro MD apparently had the SFL theme song as his ringtone. That's awesome. Yes, I will send you the file. And anyone else that wants the SFL theme music as their ringtone, I will send you the file. Uh, Big Willie 54, if you'd like the uh, if the old theme, I, I can send it to you. Simulationfl at gmail.com. Uh, always uh, always happy to help as long as uh, as long as it's not being used for uh, license purposes, since uh, we do have to purchase a license for that theme music. Uh, yeah, any any sort of uh, freelance use you want with it, you m may certainly uh, have a copy. So I uh, want to remind everyone what's uh, what we're looking at next week before we get into uh, the uh, introductions to new uh, new teams, divisions, and conferences. Uh, we hope to bring you next week uh, contract negotiation updates. We'll have uh, sort of a breaking news format here uh, on the air where we'll uh, announce some re-signings. We have made some positive strides on the back end in terms of hex editor testing. Um, we believe that all uh, custom names um, will be saved. Uh, there was some uh, thought at a time that we may not be able to save all custom names, and uh, I have to have one final meeting uh, about that, but it's looking, uh, it's looking positive uh, in terms of what we're going to be able to do with the hex editor to make sure that we can provide uh, as continued a, of a detailed as league as possible. True Shot Caller 1, yes, we will play it at the end of the night, and you will hear the theme music all night long as we introduce the divisions and new teams. So here's how it's going to work. We're going to go division by division, uh, and we're going to unveil uh, teams each in their own way. If you're new to the broadcast or just need a refresher on the identities of these uh, teams, we'll be uh, showing those as well along with all of our uh, introductions of our new teams. Uh, and uh, I've talked to a couple of uh, expansion owners or, or potential um, expansion owners earlier today that couldn't be here tonight. 
due to uh, schedule conflicts. So uh, we uh, were excited for when they are able to uh, check out the broadcast on demand and, and current owners for that matter as well. So um, what do you guys think? Should we uh, should we hop right into it? I think it's about time to hop right into it. It's four divisions of four, so we'll go one by one and take the time to talk a little bit about uh, what's been unveiled before we move on to the next one. Without further ado, Let's meet the teams. They are the constant winners, hyping their team like no other. They are the Baltimore Crabs. They are your defending SFL champions, igniting new rivalries. They are the DC Dragons. They are the new kids on the block, but the owner knows DC well. Meet the NYC Sailors. They are the steady competitor, pulling upsets at every turn. They are the San Francisco Bulldogs. These are the four who call the coast home. This is the SFL Coastal Division. So we'll run through it uh, one more time here, but uh, here's the Coastal Division. So. Uh, a bit of an interesting look because San Francisco is the only uh, Western team in this division. But uh, uh, it's interesting to note that San Francisco has a history with uh, teams like Baltimore and D.C. pulling some big upsets uh, on these teams. And, uh, you know, it, it, it also pits uh, D.C. and Baltimore together for the first time. Those teams are closer than any other two teams in the league. And you also have our first expansion team unveiled led by N.Y. Kia who was expected to be here uh, live tonight. I believe he may have gotten hung up or he's uh, he's just staying quiet in the chat, but but uh, he will also uh, bring uh, a Northeast vibe and a competitiveness uh, to a very competitive division. You know, San Francisco is one of those teams that, um, you know, you just, uh, you just can't underestimate. You can never underestimate that team. And, uh, you know, being paired with, with uh, Baltimore, who they beat in the first round of the playoffs uh, just uh, a couple of seasons ago, uh, beating the defending champs last year in a shootout game, uh, it, was, it was pretty fascinating to see how San Francisco's been able to compete uh, over the years with the best of the league. And, uh, and now they, they, they have a chance to, to show it on uh, half their schedule as uh, as Baltimore tries to win their first playoff game, as D.C. tries to defend their crown, and as the uh, NYC Sailors uh, try to, to make a dent uh, in the SFL, certainly being an expansion team this year, uh, there's big shoes to fill after last year's four expansion teams all made the semifinals. So, uh, looking at all the, the comments, I want to make sure that I, uh, that I don't miss anything, but that is the SFL Coastal Division. And without further ado, we unveil the next four teams. Also notice that uh, Baltimore has changed from navy blue to black. Uh, they are now black and gold. Let's meet the teams.
They are Ohio Rising with a new stadium and a new coaching staff. They are the Cleveland Vipers. They are the season four champions looking to unleash a roar once more. They are the Minneapolis Ballers. Formerly the New York Knights, they're turning back the clock. Ladies and gentlemen, meet the Queen City Corsairs. They are the league's smallest market, out to make the biggest splash. Meet the Sioux Falls Sparrows. These are the four who line the lakes. This is the SFL Great Lakes Division. So we'll run through it a few more times. The Sioux Falls Sparrows, the second expansion team to be announced. Uh, Cleveland uh, is uh, expected to bring on a, head, a new head coach this year. So exciting things going on there. They're moving into the Cobras Stadium. Minneapolis and Cleveland moving back into the same division. They were in uh, the same conference a couple of seasons ago. The New York Knights is the surprise. The Queen City Corsair is the surprise, we should say. Queen City was Eric Barkley's old team back in the WAFL, and he's going uh, throwback and bringing back uh, the bright green in style. Uh, it's certainly a bright division as Sioux Falls is bringing uh, the yellow as well uh, as you get a look at all four teams once again. But an interesting division. Uh, it was interesting how it sort of all came together uh, realizing that uh, that Sioux Falls was just about six hours uh, from the closest lake, and, and most of these teams sort of uh, sort of hovered around uh, around Canada uh, up there in the North United States. Uh, thought that would be an interesting division, and it and it it poses some interesting matchups as well. Uh, you have uh, you know the Maulers and the Knights who have who have done some some duels, and now it's going to be Minneapolis and and Queen City. But but really. Uh, some some a nice mix of Midwest and Northeast, uh, good blue collar towns, Buffalo, Cleveland, Minneapolis, uh, things of that nature, and uh, and so it's a good look at the Corsairs, and and it's interesting too now the Corsairs and the Sailors, the two New York teams, uh, doing doing battle um, uh, as as a battle of uh, a battle of the uh, the seamen, so. It's a, it's a pretty interesting uh, rivalry there between the, the two New York teams. These teams, along with the teams that were previously announced, will be in the same conference. Uh, so you'll still have the uh, uh, you'll still have uh, Queen City taking on uh, the DC Dragons. The, the Dragons Knights rivalry isn't there anymore, but the Dragons have uh, a new natural rival with the Baltimore Crabs. They'll still play the Minneapolis Maulers, um, which uh, tensions are high uh, there as well. So uh, it's it's an interesting mix as we take a look at the at the first uh, couple of divisions. Uh, so first we had the Coastal Division. That's Baltimore, D.C., NYC, and San Francisco. A lot of big market teams there. And you have the Great Lakes Division, which is the more uh, blue-collar division with Queen City, Minneapolis, Cleveland, and Sioux Falls. Uh, interesting uh, interesting dynamic there. So uh, congratulations to Jason1347, who's live in the chat uh, with us uh, on getting a, a new team. And Luthorn16 is excited about it as well. So we've got uh, we've got eight teams down, eight teams to go. Uh, everyone uh, everyone fired up uh, here so far tonight. That's good, uh, and we're about to get started on Division Three. Let's meet the teams.
For the first time, SFL football is coming to H-Town. Meet the Houston Hyenas. They put the funk back in football. They are the Louisville Wolfpack. They have been to more postseasons than any other. They are the Orlando Intimidators. They've got cool vibes. They've got the pride. They are the Tallahassee Pride. These are the four who beat the drum of the Bible Belt. This is the SFL South Division. So going back through the South Division again, Houston becomes the third team in. The Hyenas in uh, their, their blue and uh, silver and white and black, and they're joined by Louisville. The interesting thing about this division is the dynamic between the uh, Hyenas and, and Pride of a very jungle-themed division, uh, but also, too, uh, it's the reuniting of uh, Orlando and Louisville, uh, two owners that in the WAFL had a lot of success in the Eastern Conference. Uh, and it's it's not an east-west alignment uh, this this season in the SFL, but but um, you know it'll be interesting that when the Pride and Hyenas get together and and the fact that you know that this is a this is a pretty tough division. Houston is getting thrown in with with the number one seed of last year, the team that's made more postseasons than any other, and a team that made the semifinals in their first season. Uh, Houston, Louisville, Orlando, and Tallahassee are. Um, uh, you know, it, it's uh, this is going to be tough, and and I don't know if you've noticed, but at the top of the screen, uh, you can see the four stars in each of the uh, divisional names, and we tried to align the stars uh, sort of from a geographical perspective. So Houston is the star on the left, Louisville is the star up more to the north, Orlando and Tallahassee are the stars on the right. Uh, a similar feel to 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 the other divisions, the Great Lakes and the Coastal as well. We just tried to do a little something special there um, with with the divisional identity. So Tallahassee, Orlando, Louisville, Houston, part of a new conference. They are separate from uh, Baltimore, D.C., uh, NYC, San Francisco, and uh, Cleveland, Minneapolis, Queen City, and Sioux Falls. So this is the start of conference number two, and the South is the third division to be unveiled tonight. So, um, you know that, that the South is the South is going to be fun, uh, and uh, and I I can't uh, I can't wait to see what what rivalries uh, brew up in that division, uh, especially with two expansion teams from last year, two teams that made the semifinals last year, and lost Louisville and Tallahassee battling out for divisional rights as well. So, without further ado, here is the fourth and final division. Let's meet the teams. Sim football is coming back to Big D. These aren't your flimsy cowboys. Meet the Dallas Law. They are a constant contender, desperate to take the next step. They are the Honolulu Legends. They are not to be forgotten. Out to prove they truly can be champions. They are the Oklahoma City Renegades. They found a rhythm late last season, but failed to win it all. They'll be back. They are the Santa Fe Gorillas. These are the four who stretch the Pacific plains and borders. This is the SFL West Division.
So I jacked up the, uh, I don't know if anyone noticed, I jacked up the uh, the script there. <laughs> I always have to make one mistake every night. Uh, the, the Renegades found a rhythm late last season and uh, wants to get back to the big dance. They haven't been since season two. And uh, the Gorillas, uh, not to be forgotten, um, out to prove they can truly be champions. Uh, so an interesting dynamic uh, in the West uh, as as you sort of have teams stretched from far and wide. But Oklahoma City gets a new a natural rival with Dallas. Uh, both teams a very similar feel, Renegades and Law. Uh, you've got the, the whole, you know, Texas-Oklahoma thing going on. Uh, in that division, that's going to be a lot of fun. First time that Santa Fe and Oklahoma City will square off uh, in their history. They did not play last year. Uh, Honolulu and Santa Fe continuing sort of their, uh, I, I can't call it a rivalry, but two very t uh, good caliber defenses going against each other. Those two had uh, some outstanding games last season, and they'll play each other twice next year. Uh, so it's 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 going to be a lot of fun seeing seeing those uh, uh, duels. Santa Fe is uh, the odds-on favorite just on paper, but uh, you look at these teams: uh, Dallas, sort of the unknown; Honolulu, uh, the team that, interestingly enough, looking back at the records uh, as we were putting together some things for the website last night, Honolulu has finished four and four each of the last four seasons. This is not a team that is easily pushed over but uh, certainly is a team that, that is looking to, to sort of uh, take that next step and, and have some forward momentum. Uh, and Oklahoma City won uh, three of their last four games last year, uh, or two of their last three home uh, games last year, I should say, and, and they uh, started to get uh, that turned around. So Dallas, Honolulu, Oklahoma City, and, uh, and Santa Fe in the West. So with that, let's take a look at the map. This is sort of how it was all decided, and the the Great Plains and the and the coastal are not split up there because it would look too wonky. But obviously, the four teams closest to the Great Lakes um, are are in that division, and the coastal is on either side. So the blue represents, or, or the red, excuse me, represents an expansion team. Purple represents uh, members of casual adult gamers who have made their trip over the SFL. There's now five. Yellow represents uh, owners who made the playoffs last year. Uh, and blue represents uh, the, the, uh, the current 12 members um, of the league. I think. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not just, let, why don't we just ignore the blue and move on? But as you can see, that, that's how the divisions were split up, and it's, it's very even. Um, it, it's, it's very even in terms of, um, you know, the, the split up of playoff teams, the split up of expansion teams. Each division has one expansion team. Uh, we wanted to try to make the divisions as evenly as possible, and while uh, no division is quote-unquote easier or tougher or or can can be claimed as perfectly balanced uh, we tried to get it the best we could we tried to get an alignment that was not east west not north south something that was a little bit more interesting uh but uh but that's that's sort of that's sort of uh how how it all came about you notice that dallas and houston are split but they do uh play in the same conference so dallas and houston uh will get to see plenty of each other we lose uh, a few rivalries from, from previous years. Oklahoma City, San Francisco, they're split up into different conferences. The, the Knights, Dragons uh, is, not, um, you know, is, is, is not there anymore, obviously, with Barkley's change of direction. But you, you also get some new ones, uh, and you also uh, sort of start to form a geographical tie uh, to what's going on around here. Um, and divisions will change and fluctuate as, as, so that uh, the schedule uh, can as well. So that's just a little bit of a look at, at behind the scenes and, and what kind of went into uh, went into all of that. With that, let's take a look at the schedule structure 
So it'll show which teams are in the teal conference and the gray conference, but we won't we 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 won't use that necessarily a lot this year. However, the playoff structure due to uh, the hex editor will actually be by conference. So the gray conference champion will play the teal conference champion uh, in the SFL championship game. So the championship game will be um, a uh, a matchup between teams that have not played. Um, throughout the season, just like uh, just like last year, so so that'll be interesting. So you can you can see C uh, in parentheses is CAG, E is expansion, P is playoff team from last year. So you can sort of see um, you know how everything was divided up. So uh, you can see which teams uh, will play each other once, and which teams will play each other twice. So for example. You know, each division will play each team within the division twice. Uh, but, for example, Louisville will play Santa Fe and Oklahoma City twice. Uh, and uh, Tallahassee will play Santa Fe and Honolulu twice, et cetera, et cetera. So you can sort of, you can sort of see how your schedule uh, is going to play out um, in, terms of, in terms of who you play twice and who you play once. That was based on not only record from last year, but uh, also based on general um, success, short-term and long-term, uh, depending upon which division you're in, trying to make the schedule uh, just about as balanced as possible. It'll be interesting, Santa Fe playing Louisville and Tallahassee twice, a lot of games between semifinal teams from last year. So this is sort of the breakdown. So if you're Dallas, for example, you would play Santa Fe, Oklahoma City, Honolulu twice, play Orlando and Houston twice, and play Louisville and Tallahassee once. That's how the 12 games breaks down. It's a 12-week schedule, no buys. Everybody plays 12 games, uh, and the playoff structure will be finalized uh, in the coming weeks. So... That about does it for divisions. Want to give you a sneak peek in what's going on behind the scenes. These are the team pages being developed on the league website. You can see the Baltimore Crabs. It has the franchise record, uh, including the record in the postseason. Uh, the owner, which is Tim Johnston for Baltimore, the field they play in. You see the stadium in the background. Uh, you've got photos um, from from games in previous years on the side. If you have a widescreen uh, monitor, if you don't have a widescreen monitor, you won't you won't see them. It won't cause you clutter. Uh, and then it has uh, an owner bio. We'll have franchise records in here. And uh, once players start to be signed, we'll have headshots of the of the 12 stars on each team. When you click on the headshot, it'll actually expand, and it will have player stats. Uh, from their career that'll be updated once every calendar year um, so we'll get that all updated before the season for each player uh, and it'll show things like you know for running backs it'll show career high in rushing yards in a season rushing yards in a game um, type of records like that that you would that you would want to know um, and pretty soon as, as you see um, with the uh, teams up at the top it's it's um, Based in divisions, the icons light up when you scroll over them. If you want to see uh, what Queen City is all about, you would click on Queen City, and it will automatically take you to the Corsairs page, which, again, is still under construction. Uh, you, can, you can navigate a lot easily through the website if you want to go back up to the top of the page. Uh, you can easily do that. Not in the mode that I'm in, unfortunately, though. Uh, but, uh, but each division has its own sort of section, uh, and you can you'll be able to see all of that. So that's currently under uh, construction. You'll also be able to go again by division uh, in the teams menu to to see um, everything that the uh, the new simulationfl.com has to offer, and much more is on the way. So that just about wraps it up for us this evening. We'll show you the the intro, uh, a new intro with our updated theme song one more time, just in case you showed up late. Had a great turnout tonight, up to 25 viewers, just for an SFL update. We're so excited 
for season six and what all we are going to be able to bring to the table. New owners, congratulations, Jason1347, uh, NYKia31, DRSim80, who unfortunately couldn't be with us tonight due to a prior uh, engagement, and also uh, Landry Hat. You will all be added to the SFL Facebook group momentarily. Uh, so that we can all start to get to know each other uh, and move on with the rest of the offseason. Incredibly excited with where we're at. Got a long way to go, but Season 6 is just around the corner. This has been a presentation of the SFL, and here's one last look uh, at, uh, at our new introduction. And with that, we say good night, everybody. Thanks for being here. the Bruski and one more time Bruski oh man that's the ten. that's a touchdown Oklahoma City three receivers Walker going to the end zone is caught for a touchdown Lane's going to get another carry and Troy Lane's going to touchdown Tallahassee Pride as Funk drops the throw he's going to air it out right side and one Bosco is making some plays for this team!